Nitrous. It's one of the cheapest and easiest ways to add horsepower to most any engine. But refilling your own cylinders? Well, that can be aggravating as well as time consuming. You're stuck between having to load up your bottles and drive to a shop that does nitrous refills, or you can try doing it yourself. You know the whole routine. Buy a mother bottle, wrap it in a heated blanket or a bottle warmer, then try and make some room in your freezer to chill your bottles. But if you don't have room, you'll have to go out and buy a big cooler and fill it with a bunch of ice. Then cross your fingers and hope for the best. But no matter how good you are, the end result is always the same. Try as you may, you never get all the nitrous you paid for back out of your mother bottle. On the other hand, a refill station from NOS can not only make the task much easier and faster, if you refill a lot of bottles, it can actually save you money in the long run. Let me take you step by step through the refill process using the refill station from Nitrous Oxide Systems. Before you ever handle or attempt to refill a nitrous bottle, you should always read and follow the instructions that are included in your kit and follow these safety tips. Although your friends might think you're a comedian, you should never directly inhale nitrous oxide. It's not medical grade gas and when inhaled in large quantities, nitrous oxide can cause respiratory complications or in rare cases, death. Gloves and eye protection are a must and should always be worn whenever you're handling nitrous oxide. It discharges the bottle at negative 130 degrees Fahrenheit, so if it comes in direct contact with your skin, it can cause severe frostbite. I won't bore you with the entire assembly process of the kit, but if you actually read the instruction manual and follow the installation process, you should end up with a system that looks something like this. Place the nitrous cylinder that you intend to fill on an accurate scale. We sell kits both with and without a scale, so if you plan to use your own scale, make sure it's accurate. The scales provided in the NOS kits are legal for trade. Overfilling your bottle can cause serious damage to both you and the bottle. The first step is to determine how much nitrous oxide is left in your bottle. If you know there's only a small percentage left in the cylinder, go ahead and open the valve to relieve all the pressure that's left in the cylinder. If you're unsure of how much nitrous is left in the bottle, you'll need to first weigh it and then subtract the bottle weight from the total weight shown on the scale to determine how much nitrous is actually left in the bottle. The empty bottle weight and the maximum weight when full should both be labeled on your bottle. If your bottle is more than one third of the way full, it can just be topped off. In very hot climates, you may have to place the bottle in a refrigerator or freezer for a short time to cool it off. Since lowering the temperature will also lower the bottle pressure, this allows you to get a complete fill. Be sure that you install the PTFE washer between the Dash 6 and bottle nut and the cylinder that's going to be filled. Once you've determined how much nitrous you can add or confirm that the bottle is empty, connect the line with the nitrous control valve to your nitrous cylinder that's going to be refilled. If the cylinder being refilled is equipped with a Dash 4 fitting, use the Dash 4 to Dash 6 AN adapter fitting and the 1 foot AN Dash 4 hose. If your cylinder is equipped with the old style valve, just use the standard valve adapter. Place the bottle on the scale and note the weight. You should see a slight increase due to the additional weight of the control valve assembly. If your scale has a zeroing feature, push it now and zero it. If not, the additional tear weight must be added to the total fill weight of the cylinder that we determined earlier and is called out on the bottle. You'll need to determine whether or not your mother bottle has a siphon tube in it. Look near the base of the valve. You should find an S for siphon or DP for dip tube stamped on the side of the bottle. Some newer bottles just have the word siphon painted on them, just like this one does. If your bottle has a siphon tube, it can be left with the valve in the upright position just like this. If your bottle does not have a siphon tube, you'll need to invert the cylinder using one of our bottle fill stands so that the valve is at the bottom. Make sure that the shutoff valve on the nitrous control valve assembly is in the closed position. Fully open the valve on the mother bottle, then fully open the valve on the nitrous cylinder you're refilling. Don't forget your hand and eye protection. Open the shutoff valve on the nitrous control valve assembly and wait for the pressure in both cylinders to equalize. You'll hear a distinct sound that slowly fades away. Next, connect the transfer pump to a good clean air supply that utilizes a water trap. Also, to protect the transfer pump's internals, make sure that there's no oiler or lubricator attached to your air supply line. Slowly open the control valve on the compressed air valve assembly. Be sure to watch the scale reading and close the air pressure control valve assembly when the nitrous cylinder reaches its full weight. If the bottle that you're filling reaches 1100 PSI before the full weight of the bottle is obtained, 
stop the pump by turning off the compressed air valve, flip the bottle upside down, then upright again several times until you feel the temperature of the bottle drop. The pressure on the gauge should have dropped. If so, turn the pump back on and continue filling until you reach the bottle's maximum weight. Once you've obtained the correct weight, shut the transfer pump valve off. Close the valve on the nitrous bottle you just filled, then close the nitrous control valve found on the line running back to the mother bottle. Never fill any nitrous bottle above the full weight that's stated on the cylinder's label. Use a wrench and carefully disconnect the dash six transfer line from the nitrous bottle. Be careful, a small amount of nitrous and some pressurized gas is gonna escape when you do this. Now you can close the valve on the nitrous mother bottle and slowly reopen the nitrous control valve to bleed off any remaining gas that may be in the system. Make sure that the valve on the mother bottle is completely closed when the transfer pump is not in use. Congratulations, you've successfully refilled your nitrous bottle. Now you don't have to wait on someone else to fill your bottles, and you're not wasting money when you return those mother bottles with nitrous left in them. Before you connect any bottle to your vehicle's nitrous system, you should briefly crack the valve open and blow away any debris that may have accumulated around the port. Be careful whenever you're handling nitrous bottles, they can quickly get away from you and do some serious damage. To learn more about our nitrous refill stations from NOS or any of our other great nitrous products, visit our website at nosnitrous.com.